Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest gruesome and grotesque video. As always, I pretty much just save these videos for articles that I read on my Google News app, the kind of articles that I feel would merit essentially placing that information here. Such was the case with this story that I was reading involving these poor, young, unfortunate women who were involved, if you could call it that, very loosely in work-related injuries that were very gruesome to read, very gruesome to, to come across. And uh, at least if there's some good news associated with their trauma, it's the fact that they in turn helped pioneer many of the safety regulations that are now in place throughout multiple companies and multiple departments. So it goes to show how important it is to read about history, to know about history, because I never knew about this particular situation, but it definitely helps answer so many of the safety regulations that we have now. But it has to do with this. You're looking at a representation or a drawing of the situation involved. There's a loose term tied to it, but it's known as the radium girls, and you know more about in a minute why that term is tied to them. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all all the information linked to this particularly gruesome tale. So it actually all originated with Mary and Pierre Curie, who in 1898 helped discover radium. They in turn were the pioneers of that particular element. They were able to, to showcase it. And I think they might have been involved with some kind of patents, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody please help clear, me, uh, clear things on that part. But the most interesting thing about radium was the fact that it glowed in the dark. And because this was the first time it was really being looked at, there was a sudden radium craze that came across multiple parts of the U.S. Lots of companies wanted to get in on this because of how it looked. It almost looked like it was a miracle cure or a miracle element of some sort. And in fact, there was so many applications to it at the time, again, before people realized that it was actually very deadly if it's not contained or placed within certain safety regulations. But yeah, it was placed in this case through several items like pharmacies used it for their ailments. People, we used it to try to prevent aging. I saw pictures of it too, like when it came to hair, like people thinking that it would create some kind of hair staying on the follicles type stuff. There was even toothpaste, cosmetics, even radium water that was being done. Fascinating note, whenever all this ha was happening, clearly we know the side effects of it now, but back then this radium craze was pretty much full on board there in the United States. And one application that some guy figured out was this. There was a guy by the name of William J. Hammer. He was able to obtain um, some of the uh, radium, some of the salt crystals from the Curies and in it he decided to mix it with glue and then zinc sulfide and then that way he in turn created this whole new form of glow-in-the-dark paint and it truly did work like at least when it came to glowing in the dark he was able to place it within a corporation called US Radium Corporation and their whole purpose was to create wristwatches that would have these dials coated with that special paint and in fact you're looking at one of the advertisements here they called that product undark and it was all, everything about it was the fact that it made possible by the magic of radium the idea you could see your watch in the dark this would have been revolutionary at the time because obviously beforehand any kind of watch it wasn't really possible to see it at night alone like without some other type of light but here in this case you finally have wristwatches that would have the ability to be seen in complete darkness so this was so big that this company US Radium was able to get government contracts and this was during World War One they produced a whole bunch of watches and on top of that it was actually made into some of the airplane instruments for soldiers so that way they could also see many of those dials in the darkness so all of this in turn needs needed to have factories set up. They need to have people there working. And so that's where the radium girls come into play. This was where these factories hired dozens and dozens of young women. In fact, I was reading that at one point it must have been about 4,000 young women that were hired throughout the United States at multiple factories. But the ones that we'll focus on here are the ones in New Jersey because it seems to be the most prominent ones. But there they were inside those factories, uh, pretty much rows and rows of them. And their job was to do this. Like they took 
a particular paint brush and then they dipped it into that paint, that glow-in-the-dark paint, that radium paint, and then they would use it to, to, to coat the specific numbers on the dial. That's essentially how it would glow in the dark just with those numbers and I'm guessing some of the other tick marks if you call it that within the watches as well but how it became very dangerous for the young girls was this they were encouraged to actually lick the brushes to keep that fine point at the very end so every time they would use it on the watch itself in order to make sure that this paint didn't accidentally go into any other part of the dial they would in turn lick the first the top portion of the brush and that would happen ad nauseum imagine that working multiple hours each day and doing that hundreds and hundreds of time probably each day and that's to ensure that the paint would be created uh, in an applicable manner and in an efficient manner. Apparently some people would state, well, why didn't they have other type of items? Because some people there were, um, I guess it was either the workers or maybe other people there within the factory asking if there was something else that they could use for this type of fine point. But it was determined that no, this was something that was the most cost effective, cost efficient manner. And then the women could do it in a quickly manner too, in a manner that was quicker as opposed to trying to use other forms of instruments throughout the application. So in turn, it was basically the women doing this hundreds of times a day, and then they would do that um, through the dangers of radium. And then eventually it got to the point of this, either the women themselves or their clothes started to actually glow in the dark. In fact, one uh, person was stating that this dust samples collected in the workroom from various locations and from chairs were all luminous in the dark room. Their hair, faces, hands, arms, necks, dresses, underclothes, and even the corsets of these painters were all luminous. And then on top of that, the skin on top of these uh, young women also became luminous. Like there was their legs and in some cases their thighs. There was one other young painter who had her entire back luminous, glowing in the dark from almost um, from the top all the way to the bottom of her waist. Crazy stuff, right? When you think about that now because of how dangerous that was. Everything was A-OK -okay at the beginning, but lo and behold, after a certain point, dozens of these young women started to show illness. Remember, this wasn't, I, I didn't read it, like the way I read it was, I, I didn't read like it was 100% radium, like it was radium, but it was diluted within all those other materials that I mentioned earlier. But still, the after effects came into play because yeah, dozens of these young women started to have shown signs of illnesses and it got really bad. This is where the gruesome part comes into play. Because apparently the human body will take this radium and fill it in areas where calcium is normally given into the body. And so in turn, every time they dipped this brush into their mouth, their body was in turn taking this radium and then putting it everywhere inside their body, in their bones in particular. And when that happened, this occurred next. Their bones would end up breaking because of the lack of calcium. Their teeth would also fall out, which is someone's worst nightmare, right? When it comes to that, imagine uh, chewing on something and then suddenly having teeth fall out or pulling a tooth loose and then realizing that all your teeth are being able to be pulled loose. That's the stuff of nightmares. And then the worst part that I read was this. One of the young girls or multiple of their young girls, their spines would inwardly collapse. Isn't that just horrible just even thinking about that? The idea that someone's spine would just turn inward on itself and of course, that would just be horrific for the young girl, if not deaf, outright. And so after a couple of years of this, more than 50 young women had died. And then that's when obviously it was realized, hey, this is not good. Like when it comes to this, this type of application that was being used as paint, not just that, but the way that it was being applied for. So there were going to be some changes, but what happened was some of the women banded together. They wanted to have some compensation because of all the medical and legal costs that they were going to have in terms of the um, hospital bills, in terms of in some cases, the funeral 
costs and also the lawyers that they were going to have to hire. The problem, though, was that the company itself, the U.S. Radium Company, in turn had their own team of high-profile lawyers, and they had the U.S. government backing them like when it came to being a government contractor status. In any case, though, the entire thing took on a viral stance, like if you call it that from back then. It t took on a national sensation status, and then that's when a prominent painters, uh, I guess somebody by the name of Grace Fryer actually joined in on a lawsuit and she ended up winning along with four of the women damages of about $250,000 dollars, which was, of course, a lot for that time period. And so they would eventually settle for a certain amount, and that was dispersed. The only problem, though, was by that point, many of the young women were dying. And in fact, some of them ended up, those that won with the settlement, ended up dying two years after that because of the poison that was within their bodies. Just horrible, horrible stuff. And there was really no winners when it came to these poor young women and what they had to go through, not knowing of course, at the time uh, when they were dipping that in their mouth, the after effects, but then having to deal with this, like in other words, trying to have something done when it came to changes and when it came to getting legal uh, ramifications and, and awards from it, and then of course having them die afterward anyways because of the poison within their bodies. But again, if there's any grace associated with their sacrifice, it's this, it's the fact that many procedures, safety regulations were changed afterward, not only of course with what was happening on the wristwatches and watches altogether, but apparently the Manhattan Project also uh, was prominent when it came to the use of certain uh, elements that were considered radioactive, and so they ended up changing many applications and many, uh, uh, many regulations on there and to ensure that they were all following the appropriate safety precautions. In fact, the way I was reading it was they used the example of the way the factories were made and the way the women worked there at the at the, at the location, the radium girls, and then they were able to use that as a counter effect to do the opposite of and to ensure that way thousands of other workers on their end would not have any kind of great danger on their end too. And then also the, there were changes involving workers' compensation, worker safety. In fact, there was uh, the United States Congress passed a law right after this was happening with the radium girls, right after the sensation took over, and it was the idea that if any workers had any kind of severe injuries associated with their workplace, then they would have occupational rewards or some kind of, um, like in other words, uh, like any occupational instances that came from their workplace, uh, any injuries or illnesses, then they would receive good compensation for it. So all of that came from what happened to these radium girls. But again, fascinating though when it comes to the history associated with uh, timelines, like when it comes to what we have now and what it took to get there from the from these poor unfortunate young women and what occurred to them. But if anybody has any more information, anything else I might have missed, it's, it's uh, please let me know. It's crazy too to think that at one point radium was considered a miracle cure. Everyone was applying it to the toothpaste, to their hair, to their skin, um, anything else like as far as water even. But how what a difference time makes now when it comes to that. But again, if anybody has any information please let me know. All right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care. Bye.